Tonight on Newswatch 18, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences announced today that they are losing an important member of their faculty this summer. One Iowa State student is making a large contribution to Dance Marathon thanks to the Ford Company. And will the Blue Sky Task Force make your education more efficient? All that and more tonight on Newswatch 18. Live from Studio B, this is Newswatch 18 with Natalie Freustad, Tessa Callender, and Tim Holtz Sports. Newswatch 18 starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Natalie Freustad. And I'm Tessa Callender. The Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Michael Whiteford, will retire from his position this summer. Dean Whiteford made this decision Wednesday through an email to the LAS Department chairpersons, faculty, and staff. In his email, Whiteford said, quote, I've had an absolutely terrific career at this institution. I've been honored and blessed to have, the op have an opportunity to work with many fantastic and talented individuals. Dean Whiteford plans to move to Oregon following retirement to be with family. He was an anthropology professor at Iowa State and was named LAS's dean in September of 2003. The College of Liberal Arts and Sciences may soon be condensed even further. Kim McKenzie and Matt Nasco have the story. The Blue Sky Task Force report was released to the public. The task force was directed to make recommendations for the over-budgeted College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. The task force was organized by Michael Whiteford. The Blue Sky Initiative was set up by the Dean to bring together a group of people from the Liberal Arts and Science College um, just to come up with new ideas that might work to help uh, with budget problems that the college is having. One of the main recommendations made by the task force was consolidation. They proposed merging the existing 11 departments into six more efficient departments. The Blue Sky initiative was to try and look at how maybe we could find groupings of uh, disciplines or departments that might have things in common so that they could work together and still be viable as a, as a department and a major. One graduate student, Ian Riggenberg, who attended the meeting says that the task force's recommendations are a good first step. He did note that the programs needed to keep some distinction to set them apart from other places. And yet, at the same time, enrollments are growing and we're getting more and more students and they're expecting us to teach more students with fewer and fewer resources. And at some point, the system breaks and I think that's where we're at. And so that's why we're looking for ways to drastically change business. Although the Blue Sky Report has made some valuable suggestions, it is still unknown what will be done. For ISU TV with Matt Nosco, I'm Cam McKenzie. For the full Blue Sky Report, you can visit the Iowa State website. Iowa State student Tyler Stafford can add another $10,000 onto the amount of money he has raised for Dance Marathon. Stafford, a senior in advertising and speech communications, recently won the Ford Focus Global Test Drive video competition. Through his winnings, Tyler won a trip for two to Spain, a 2012 Ford Focus to test drive for three months, and $10,000 toward a charity of his choice. His contribution will be used to start up an educational program through ISU Dance Marathon, which will consist of scholarships and tutors, which will be used by children who are patients at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. House Study Bill 50, or the Religious Conscience Protection Act, is dead. The bill would have allowed Iowans to deny housing, employment, or services to couples whose marriages they disapproved of. Although the main target for this bill was gay and lesbian couples in Iowa, the bill could extend to affect couples based on a variety of reasons, including race and religion. As of yesterday, it was announced that no further consideration on the bill would take place in the Iowa House. Coming up after the break, yet another heartbreak for the Cyclone woman in overtime. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that was the case last night. I'll have all your sports updates. Stay tuned. You're watching News Watch. After a car accident, Linda Davis needed CPR. Bill Hamilton needed temporary shelter when a fire destroyed his home. During an operation, Haley Reynolds needed a blood transfusion. Excuse me, may I go into that room, please? Next year, Revenant Road again will be a focus. Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. America is turning over a new leaf. The Smartway Leaf from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The Smartway Leaf will help you identify environmentally friendlier cars and trucks that can save you money. These vehicles are certified to be more fuel efficient and produce fewer greenhouse gases. And look for renewable fuels to improve our energy independence. Follow the Leaf to epa.gov slash smartway. The Cyclone women's basketball team hit the road again last night to take on the Kansas Jayhawks in Lawrence. The Twister sisters fall in another heartbreaker, 86-85 to in overtime. It was an uphill battle for the majority of the night, including a 15-point deficit in the second half. Kelsey Bolte was one of three Iowa State players to score at least 20 points in the contest, dropping in 26. But Caroline David scored 31 points for the Jayhawks, including the game-winning bucket with just two seconds to go. The Cyclones will return home for an unusual Sunday contest with Kansas State. Start time is slated for 4 o'clock and will be televised nationally on ESPN2. The Iowa State men's team has lost six games in a row, and it's not going to get any easier when they travel to second-ranked Kansas on Saturday. The Jayhawks took the first meeting of the year 84-79 back on January 12th. In that contest, Deontay Garrett scored 27 points, but Marcus and Markeith Morris each recorded double-doubles, with Marcus scoring a game-high 33 points. Kansas shot 31 free throws compared to the Cyclones' 10, and that can't happen again if the Cyclones want to have a chance in this one. Iowa State has lost 11 straight in the series and haven't won at Kansas since 2005. Tip-off is set for 3 o'clock at Allen Fieldhouse. Just two weeks ago, Coach Kevin Jackson and the Iowa State wrestling team were in the midst of a six-match losing streak. Now the Cyclones have reeled off three straight wins and are looking to make it four when they travel to Missouri for a conference tilt on Sunday. They currently stand at 9-8 overall and are still looking for their first conference victory of the year. The 14th-ranked Cyclones and the 18th-ranked Tigers are slated for a 1 p.m. start on Sunday. On the national level tonight, reports are surfacing out of Salt Lake City saying that Utah Jazz coach Jerry Sloan will resign. Sloan, who is in his 23rd year of coaching the Jazz, he took them to two NBA Finals appearances, losing the Chicago Bulls each time. Sloan compiled 1,221 wins over his 25-year coaching career. Thanks, Tim. It sounds like the Cyclones are in for a tough weekend. And after the break, Liz Cease will be here with a weather update. And it will sounds like we will be in for warmer weather for the weekend. Stay tuned right here to Newswatch 18. Making it green is making sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Make sure you test your home for the presence of radon. It's easy. To learn more, call 866-730-GREEN. Preserve your family's health and well-being. Get your home tested. Now that's living healthy and green. Green, green, green. It's your home, it's your dream. Radon test and keep it healthy and clean. Make it green, green. To learn more, call 866-730-GREEN. 
G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me back. Hey, did you tell your parents about us? Let's skip first period together. Did you get all my texts? Is practice over yet? Where are you at? Are you with your friends? That's L-A-A-A-A-M-M-E-E. -E. Capital X, lowercase o, capital X, lowercase o. I love you. JK, I hate you. JK. Are you ignoring me? We're in a huge fight right now. Is this something I did? I can see your lights on. I'm coming this over. What did you dream about? Did me? I'm lonely. lonely. Holla back. Holla back. Let's try something new. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Welcome back to News Watch. We're going to take a look at your Iowa weather really quick. And it's definitely going to be, it'll still be a little chilly tonight, but tomorrow we're definitely expecting a warm up. You can see the overnight low is going to be around negative three. Um, it might be a little bit warmer, but for the most part, tomorrow we could actually get right near the freezing mark. So you can expect a lot of that snow to start melting, which is definitely a nice change compared to what we're used to. <clears throat> Currently, it's around 18 degrees with southwest winds right around 10 miles an hour, so not too bad. It's pretty clear out, so definitely a nice day today, much nicer than we have been having. And you can see pretty much the majority of the state is clear. There's a few clouds starting to work their way into western Iowa, but for the most part, again, a very nice day today, um, especially compared to what we're used to seeing. Tonight, you can see low around 8. It could get down a little bit cooler than that, uh, so still a little bit chilly tonight. West-southwest winds around 5 to 10 miles an hour, so not too windy, which is definitely going to be a very nice night compared to what we're used to. I know it's weird thinking that 8 degrees is warm, but definitely going to be much warmer tomorrow. You can see a high of around 30. Wind still right around 5 to 10, so really nice day tomorrow. And that trend is going to continue as we go into the weekend. You can see Friday, again, high of 30. Saturday and Sunday, it'll be up near 40. Uh, so definitely a very nice weekend. Um, a lot of that snow is going to start to melt, and that's going to give us uh, some much warmer temperatures. And you can see, even going into Tuesday next week, it uh, looks to be around 41. And it's not on the graph, but I was looking, and they're thinking maybe 46 or 47 for Wednesday and Thursday next week. So definitely a very nice warm up on the way. If you're still looking for something to get your significant other for Valentine's Day, the ISU Horticulture Club has you covered. The club will be selling fresh roses on Monday, February 14th, from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon in front of the University Bookstore in the MU. Prices for the roses are $5 for a single stem, $30 for a half dozen, and $60 for a dozen. The prices include filler flowers as well as a tissue paper wrap, a ribbon, and a water pick. So, Tim, do you have anyone special you're going to be buying these roses you know what, for? You know what, Natalie, I don't. Um, so I, I don't have to worry about you it. Could always, you could always you could always hit up the the speed dating event here on campus, find somebody to give those flowers to. Any of us would appreciate <laughs> some roses. I won't go to the speed dating event either. <laughs> At least it'll be nice out compared yeah. to the negative 15 degrees we've had the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And, yeah, and let's see. Hopefully the, the Cyclone men's basketball team can stop that six-game slide. We're really hoping it'll be a very tough task at Kansas mm -hmm. this weekend. And hopefully the women playing na on national TV on Sunday afternoon, hopefully they can get back on the winning track too. So, um, If we take a look at the five-day again, you can see uh, tomorrow again, high of around 30, so that snow will start to melt. Definitely make it able to be much warmer. So you can see into the weekend we could see – Temperatures up near 40, and going into next week, we could even get above that, and there's a chance for some 46, almost up into the 50 degree weather uh, until later next week. So, and that's all for tonight's edition of Newswatch 18. Tune in Sunday at 7 p.m. for more Cyclone news, weather, and sports. Have a great night. <laughs>